again, welcome everyone to the technical sessions. Tonight we've got P Money, come on and have a talk to us. Um, I guess like we always do, uh, might as well start right at the beginning. I mean, how you've been kind of producing music and DJing for a long time now, how did you originally get into it? Like my first little moments of inspiration would have been the music of um, groups like Public Enemy and uh, Run DMC. Yeah, quite specifically those two yeah. groups. So I was in primary school in the '80s, so they they were they were the big like rap groups out, and yeah, it just kind of struck a chord with me. And it wasn't until I was a little bit older, so I started to kind of figure out like we'll try to figure out how they made their music. It didn't make sense to me how like where the music was coming from because I didn't see a drummer and a guitarist and a keyboard player I didn't see instruments on stage I saw a dude with turntables and guys with mics and I was like okay the DJ's playing records but then how do they make these particular beats that are on these records where are they where do they come from and I was always curious about the production and those hip-hop records and I'm talking about 12 I was like 12 13 starting to obsess about this this stuff so I'd read the magazines that, that were out, rap music magazines. Um, obviously, this is, we're talking nine, oh, 1991, mm -hmm. so there's no internet to be able to just Google it. Yeah. Um, so I'd have to pick up magazines. Uh, yeah, and, and, I, and I learned little bits and pieces. I, I figured, okay, well, if the turntables are what it is, it's the turntables, and like a DJ and a rapper, then I need to be the DJ because I like the beats and the music. I didn't care so much about the rhyming at that point. I didn't want to be a vocalist. I just wanted to do the music. So I, I've um, got some garage sale turntables and started scratching, like basically a turntable from a home stereo <laughs> hi-fi unit, take that and plug it into a twin cassette deck and try and scratch. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was putting it together. And with the twin cassette deck, this is where the early stages of production <laughs> start to come creep out. With the twin cassette deck, you could push pause and record a little piece of music and pause it again at the end of a bar like, and then rewind that music. And then let go of pause and start at the same time, and you get the same piece of the same bar of music repeated, just like now when you record audio in a computer and chop and loop it up. I was doing that on tapes um, when I was 13, 14, messing about. And so I'd do that and make my little instrumental tape and then play it back and just scratch over it. And that was me making beats like at the earliest, earliest stages. A um, couple of years fast forward, uh, making some money, like part time job. And found out you could get a multi-track tape recorder, which would record four tracks. So I was like, cool, I can actually lay down my beat and my scratching and whatever else I want and start to compose little songs or mixtapes. So I started doing that. Once I got my hands on that kind of kit and a drum machine, I got a drum machine when I was 16 as well for like um, the best Christmas present in life ever. <laughs> uh, got a drum machine. Once I had that, I was like, sweet, I quit school. Um, and just stayed home, <laughs> and they, unbeknownst to my, my parents, <laughs> they thought I was still at school, well my dad still, thought I was still at school, but I was actually in my room, um, yeah, he'd go to work and I'd just go take off my uniform and go back into my room, and, and just, just mess about on this drum machine with the turntable, you know, and get the, the multi-track, actually a little bit out of order, I'd get the multi-track later, but yeah. Um, yeah, had that basic kit and started making beats, beat tapes and things. I mean, that's the real humble origins of, of my style of production. When you were doing that, were there, did you have guys around you that were doing similar things? Or was it all basically you were reading up and just getting information where you can? Yeah, it was, I didn't know anybody who even cared about this stuff. Yeah. Like, let alone knew how to do anything yeah. or knew about equipment. I didn't even, I only had like maybe... I could count the friends on one hand who actually cared about the music mm. that I was into, like the hip hop stuff um, in my neighborhood, you know. Yeah. But we were all very passionate. We yeah. loved our Wu Tang and our Nas and Biggie and all the artists that were coming out. We loved that stuff, but I was the the most obsessive about how they made the songs. All of us enjoyed listening to the music, but I wanted to make it. Um, so yeah, I started to just pick up little bits of information here and there. Read an article from like, an interview with the RZA, yeah. and he might mention that he uses the ASR ten sampling keyboard mm -hmm. so I'd have to figure out where do you get those and can I afford one I couldn't so I didn't get one but <laughs> at the same time you know there'd be things like they'd mention uh, records that they might sample like yep. breaks and I was like cool well that's within my price range I can go to get the bus the groovy and dig through the crates and find the same record mm -hmm. and then hear the original track hear what they did with it 
and go, oh, right, and then try and copy it. Yeah. I would actually do that a lot. I'd try and remake beats that I'd heard or sample the same break beat and chop it the way they chopped it so my beats would sound like their beats. Because I just wanted to sound like them. Mm. I wanted to sound like Wu-Tang. I wanted to sound like DJ Premier. Yeah. You know, my teens and even early 20s. I just wanted to, once I kind of figured out and I was making things that did sound like them, then I was like, well, that's cool, but I just sound like them. Yeah. So then... No, started to find your own sound. Yeah, started yeah. to have to find my own sound. Were you... Did you have any vocals in here, or was it all instrumental, or...? Um, I would sample vocals, like, yep. out of rap songs. Yeah. Because that was kind of a style at the time, too. I yep. guess around 96, 7, there were, like, party break kind of records. We'd have a hip-hop beat, like, a loop from a song, and then just a phrase from, you know, from Method Man. Sure. Um, you know, saying something over and over, so i just do the same thing. Yeah. And make my little loops, whether it be back-to-back -back off turntables, two copies of the record, and repeating that over a beat that I programmed. Mm -hmm. Or if I had enough room in my sampler, I'd sample the vocal. Because there was only like 12 seconds yeah. time on, on the sampler that I was using at the time. Yeah. So if I used that up with music, I couldn't do the vocal. Hardly. So can, what was the sampler you were using at the time? Uh, Roland MS-1. Yeah. Okay. Which, look on uh, Trade Me or eBay, you'll probably pick it up for about 50 bucks. <laughs> it's uh, a little sampler about that big. It's got eight buttons on it. There's no sequencer in it. It just You can just record sounds and play them back. Um, and it's got a variable sample rate, so it can be like high quality 16-bit, <laughs> uh, 44.1. Glorious 16-bit. Yeah, glorious 16-bit, yep. but the fun part was then you switch it down to the standard uh, mode, which is like 12-bit, yep. and it's like 24K, and it starts to sound really cool, and you can degrade it even more mm. um, to get more time. But of course, the slower you make it, the more shit it sounds. Yeah. But somewhere in the middle there is like really cool character, mm. and I used to make beats all in, like on that thing, and I had a boss, the boss drum machine that I got when I was a kid. I used that as my sequencer. Yep. So just MIDI the two together. And so I would never really use the sounds that are on the drum machine. I just use it to program like how you would an NPC that has everything mm -hmm. all in one. I just use that and that and, uh, and do it that way. Mm. And um, yeah, I put all those beats onto cassette tapes and give them to people. Like people that I thought were really talented and cool and would understand my music and could maybe get me somewhere. Yeah. So I just hang out at gigs. And annoy people like DLT and um, Shafu and that. Yeah. Worked. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good move. <laughs> well, at the same time as messing about and having lots of fun creating my own music and, and learning how about doing beats, yeah. I was spending as much, if not more, time trying to get really good on the turntables okay. as a yep. turntablist, like scratch DJ. Yep. Um, I wasn't working in any clubs. I didn't go out. I didn't go to parties. I was very much a hermit, very much stay at home in my own zone um, and just scratch. And so I didn't know about playing parties and making sure. money from DJing. Yep. Because I just could scratch. Mm. So I couldn't even play a set. Yep. <laughs> you, know? you couldn't book me for your party. I'd be terrible. I had like 12 records and all I could do was and cut after things After five up. minutes, it was... Yeah. yeah, it would just bore the hell out of people. Uh, but that led me to competitions. Sure. DJ battles and competitions that I would enter. Uh, and I entered the New Zealand ITF National DJ Championships in 97. Mm -hmm. And I placed fourth um, in the... It was the only competition, so it was the national mm. competition. Yep. And I got fourth place, which was pretty good for a complete novice and, and unknown. Yeah. And so there, people noticed me, and they were like, okay, people um, like DJ Severe and um, and Shea Fu were there. And DJ Severe, like Phil, he took me on board, um, was like, okay, you can play at our party. I'm going to give you a half an hour to play, you know, see if you can actually play at this party. Yep. So I took all the records I had and played that half an hour, <laughs> and I did pretty good. And he's like, cool. Why don't you go back on and do another half an hour? I, was like, I just played all the, my records, bro. <laughs> That's it. I don't have any more records. He's like, oh, you can play some of mine. And so I was like, cool, we played another half an hour. And that was the beginning of it for me.